Hi, we're going to now look at 2018 Leave Insert Ordinary Level Cash Flow Solution. First of all, in the cash flow question, we are given a profit and loss account and we are given a balance sheet. And then from that, we are asked to A, reconcile the operating profit to net cash inflow or outflow from operating activities. Then we are asked to prepare a cash flow statement under these six headings. And then we are asked to reconcile the net cash flow to move into net debt. So the first thing we're going to do is the reconciliation of operating profit to net cash inflow or outflow from operating activities. So to do that, we'll start with our operating profit. And our operating profit, we will get from the question, we can see our operating profit is 85,000. So we're going to put in 85,000 there. Then we have to add back depreciation. Now, depreciation is a non-cash item. You don't physically hand over cash for depreciation, but it is an expense. So that has to be added back here, and you always add depreciation. So I have to work out what the depreciation for the year was. So I can see here from my balance sheet, at the end of the year, the depreciation was 40,000. At the start of the year, it was 28,000. So 40,000 this year, 28,000 last year. So the difference in depreciation is 12,000, and I'm always adding it, so it's a plus 12,000. Next, I'm going to have a look at the stock and debtors. I'll take those together, because stock and debtors are both assets. So if there's an increase of st in stock, means we spent more money on stock, which means that our cash will go down. Similarly, with debtors, if de debtors are people that owe us money, if debtors owe us more money, our cash is going to go down. And it'll be the opposite. If they owe us less money, our cash will go up. So with stock and debtors, the easiest way, I think, to remember this for the sake of the exam is they're the opposite of what you think. So if stock goes up, it's a decrease in cash. If debtors goes up, it's a decrease in cash. If stock goes down, it's an increase in cash. And if debtors go down, it's an increase in cash. So to look at the stock in this question the stock in this question this year is 52 and last year is 47 so 52,000 this year 47,000 last year so stock has gone up by 5,000 which means we spent more on stock so our cash is going to go down by 5,000 debtors in this question debtors are 30,000 last this year so the debtors are 30,000 and last year, the debtors were 26,000. So debtors are people that owe us money. So now we're owed more money than we were last year. We're owed 4,000 more than we were last year, which means our cash is going to go down by 4,000 because we're owed more money. So with stock and debtors, as I said, it's the opposite of what you think. If there was an increase, as we can see here, it will go down. And if that was a decrease, it would actually go up. And it's the same with debtors. Here is an increase, so it's going to, my cash is going to go down. And if it was a decrease, my cash would go up. Now, creditors. Creditors are liabilities, so they'd be treated differently. With creditors, creditors are people that we owe money to. So if creditors increase, it means we owe them more money, so we haven't paid them, so we'd have them more so we'd have more cash. So if there's an increase in creditors, our cash is going to go up. And similarly, if there's a decrease in creditors, means we owe them less, which means we paid them more money. So if there's a decrease in creditors, our cash will go down. So for creditors, I would remember it's the same as you think. If there's an increase, it will go up. And if it's a decrease, it will go down. So in this question here, we can see that creditors are 11,000 this year and are 22,000 last year. So there are 11,000 this year and 22,000 last year. So we owe creditors less money, which means our cash would go down because we paid them more money this year. So it's going to be a minus 11,000. That's the same as what you think. So if it's a decrease, it is a minus. And if that was a creditor increase, it would be a plus. So now to total all these, it gives me 77,000. And that is a net cash inflow from operating activities. And I'm going to just highlight, underline inflow here because this figure is a plus. The 77,000 is a plus. If the 77,000 was a minus, we would call it an outflow. 
And that is part A done, the first reconciliation we were asked to do. Part B then, we were asked to do the cash flow statement. And we're given the six headings which we have to do the cash flow statement under. So the first heading on the cash flow statement is operating activities. So under operating activities, we just put in whatever we our final figure is here. Net cash, and because it's an inflow, we're going to write inflow from operating activities. So the net cash inflow from operating activities is just the same figure, whatever figure we have here, which in this case is 77,000. Return on investment and servicing of finance. So here we just put in any interest we received or any interest that we paid. Now we didn't receive any investment in income or anything like that, so it's just the interest that we paid. Um, if we go back to the question, we can see that the interest paid is 5,000. So that 5,000 will go in here and it will go in as a minus because if we paid 5,000 interest, it will reduce our cash. The third heading is taxation. So under taxation, we put in tax paid. With tax paid, you just have to be careful. Because if you look at the tax, we can see that. At the end of last year, we owed 9,000 tax. The tax charge for this year is 7,000. So in the PL, it says our tax charge for this year is 7,000. At the end of this year, we owe 7,000, which means we must have paid last year's tax. And that's usually the case in these questions, the taxation paid is last year's, because this year's taxation charge of 7,000 is still outstanding at the end of the year, but the 9,000 must have been paid. So in taxation, we're gonna put in tax paid of 9,000, and it's last year's tax that was paid. Capital expenditure and financial investment are any fixed assets that we buy or sell. So from the question, we can see the fixed assets, the, fixed asset, the only fixed asset we have is land and buildings, and they went up, so we must have purchased them. If they went down, we would have sold them. So if we purchased land and buildings, we must have spent 100,000 buying the land and buildings because last year they were 250, this year they're 350. So we spent 100,000 buying land and buildings, so that's going to be a minus 100,000, because money we spent. If we sold them, it would be a plus figure, it would be a positive, it would be cash in. The fifth heading we have is equity dividends paid, and underneath that heading, we just put in dividends paid. And we'll get the dividends paid figure here from the P&L of 6,000. So that just goes in as a minus 6,000, because again, it's money that we paid, money gone out. Now, the, the layout of this question, you have to total them after the first five headings, or you will lose some marks. So after heading number five, we'll total these down. Which gives us minus 43,000. And that is called net cash outflow because it's a negative figure before liquid resources and financing because heading number six is financing. So we're just doing a subtotal after five headings before we do the last heading. And that comes to minus 43,000. And now we will do heading number six. And under financing, we will put in if there's any ordinary shares, share premium, or if we got any extra debentures or repaid debentures. So the first thing we have to do is check the share capital. So if we go down to our balance sheet, we will see the share capital has increased from 119 to 148. So share capital has gone up by 29,000, the difference between 119 and 148. So we've got in an extra 29,000 from issuing shares, which is positive cash. So we're gonna have a positive 29,000. We can see that we must have charged a premium or an extra amount on those shares. So last year the premium was six, this year it's 15. So the premium has got up by 9,000, which means we've got in an extra 9,000 cash. So again, that's going to be a positive 9,000. And the debentures, you have to be just careful with the debentures because sometimes a debenture is a long-term loan. Sometimes we get an extra loan, which means we'll have more cash. Sometimes we might pay back some of the loan, which means we have less cash because we spent that cash paying back the loan. So with the debentures, if they go up, we have more cash. If they go down, we have less cash. So last year, my loans were 95,000. This year, they're 105,000. So while that's bad, I suppose, it's a liability that we have the loan, we actually have more cash. So we have an extra 10 grand cash to spend because the debentures went up by 10,000. So here, the issue of the ventures is going to be plus 10,000. As I said, if it increases, 
it's going to be a plus cash figure. If it decreases, it'll be a minus amount. So now I'm going to total heading number six, financing, which comes to 48,000. And I'm going to add that to my subtotal above, which gives me an increase in cash during the year. And again, I've underlined increase because that is a positive figure. If that was a negative figure, that would be a decrease in cash. Now at this stage, you can check if this figure is right, which is useful in this question. It's nice to see if, you, if your answer is right. There's not that many questions you can actually do that in. So to do this, I'm going to go back to my balance sheet. So I'm going to look for my bank figures. Now in this question, bank is an asset in both years. Some questions, it might be a liability one year, so you have to be just careful comparing them. So this year, I, I have 22,000 in bank. Last year, I had 17,000 in bank. So 22,000 this year. Last year, I had 17,000, which means my difference is 5,000. My bank has gone up by 5,000, which should tie here to my increase in cash of 5,000. That is part B of the question completed. And part C, we have to reconcile the net cash flow to movement in net debt. So the first thing we're going to have here in part C always will be either my increase or decrease in cash, which will be my last figure from part B. So now in this question, it's an increase in cash of 5,000, so 5,000 will go there. With my debentures, I'm just going to take my debentures figure from above, but it will always be the opposite sign. So if my debentures is a plus figure here, when it goes into this reconciliation, it'll be a minus. If it was a minus figure here, it would be a plus figure here. So this year, it's a plus 10,000 here. So I'm going to put it into this reconciliation as a minus 10,000. And that will give me, if I add those, it'll give me a change in net debt of minus 5,000. Now I have to get my net debt at the start. Okay, so for the net debt, I'm just going to be taking my bank figures, my the money I have in the bank and taking away my bank loan. So last year, if I look to get my net debt. I had 17,000 in the bank, which is good, it's an asset, but I can see that I owed 95,000 of a loan. So to work out my net debt, it's going to be 17, a plus 17, minus 95. So that's going to be 17 minus 95, which comes to minus 78,000. And to work out my net debt at the end, if I just get my change in net debt during the year, and I add it to my net debt at the start, it'll give me a net debt at the end of minus 83,000. And we can also check if that figure is correct, because if I go back to the question, if I get my net debt here from the balance sheet, it should be the same amount. So I can see here that in 2017, in the bank, I had 22. I had the benchers or loans of 120, sorry, 105. So 22 in the bank, Bank loan of 105, so 22 minus 105 is 83, and that corresponds to the figure we have there. So then we can see that the reconciliation is correct. So I hope that helps, and if it does, please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more questions. Thank you.